Hey everyone, Dave here, another Nerdy Canuck. This video is about a permanent Christmas light installation that I just did on my house. For a number of years, I've been looking for some affordable, permanent Christmas lights. I don't really like going up and putting them up and taking them down each year. I was looking for something that wasn't too fancy. I didn't really have like a lot of programming that I wanted to do. I just wanted some nice, simple, easy, permanent Christmas lights. But I ended up getting so much more. Last year, I found the WLED program and the Dig Uno or Dig Uno controller and uh, some lights. I ordered them last year as a test install, and it worked out really, really well. If you want to see that video, it's linked in a card in the corner. Having proven out that system, I wanted to do a permanent install. I did consider getting some J-channel, some vinyl, and doing drilling my own holes, but I ended up deciding to spend a little extra money and going with the Permatrack.us, and I loved it. It worked really, really well. It worked so well, in fact, that I actually decided to add some more to my system, so I guess that makes this a part one video. The primary purpose of this video is to show the installation of the lights. If you're interested in more information about the controller and the setup of that controller, you can check out my video from last year. Or, if that doesn't have what you're looking for, let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can make a new one. You can find links to most of the things that I used during this installation in the description below if you're interested. WLED works with individually addressable LEDs. Each of the LEDs on the string has a small circuit board that has power inputs and a data line. For an install of hundreds of lights, the voltage drops along the string of lights, and the LEDs at the end will be dimmer than at the start. To avoid this, you need to boost the voltage by connecting power at certain points along the string of lights. This is called power injection. The type of lights I am using come in 5 volt or 12 volt power supplies. I prefer using the 12 volt style because it requires much less frequent power injection. You can see that each end of the string of lights has a connection for continued power and data, but they also have some pigtails to allow power injection as well. We don't need to boost the data signal as a circuit board on each light does that for us. For my install, I plan to place the power supply and controller in a box on the wall on the right side of my garage. I will run the power and data cable up through the roof and then along the roof line. I will do power injection in two places. Because I tend to overdo things, I will be running two independent 14 gauge wires from the output of the Dig Uno controller. Last year, I connected my power injection wires directly from the power supply. However, I noticed that this unfiltered power tended to create odd random hotspots or lights that would remain on when the system was powered off. So this year, I decided to attach them directly to the filtered signal from the Dig Uno controller. Uh, these wires could also have been run along inside of the track, but for my setup, I'm going to run the power injection wires through the attic of the garage and will join up on the track on the left side of the garage. I just didn't want to be running a pair of additional wires when I was wiring the peak. I could also have probably just used a single wire for my power injection and just tapped off of it in two different places, but better safe than sorry. I will be adding power injection in two places on my stall, one at the bottom left side of the main peak and the other at the bottom left side of the small peak. So I chose to use some aluminum channel track that I purchased from permatrack.us. This LED track was white, and in order to help it blend into my house trim, I went to my local home hardware store and bought some reasonably color-matched paint. After starting to paint, my wife observed that the paint wasn't sticking very well, so we ended up lightly sanding all of the remaining tracks, and that worked a lot better. We did put two coats of paint on. For cutting the track, I used tin snips or a hacksaw. Neither of them worked very well, and the cuts weren't as pretty as I would have hoped but they worked out all right. Fortunately, my son was able to help me install the track. It is definitely way easier with two people. Attaching the permatrack was just a matter of screwing the clip bracket to the soffit with some metal screws. The aluminum track and wires are not very heavy, so I assume these will hold up just fine. We pushed the LEDs through the pre-drilled track. This required a fair bit of force and wiggling, and we both ended up with some sore fingers at the end of the install. Once the lights were in, we would squeeze the track into the clips that were in place. It does require a fair bit of squeeze force to get the track to compress, but I suppose that ensures that it won't pop out very easily. Once the lights were seated in the track, we found it was much easier to clip the track in place if we pushed the bumps of wire down first. The strings of lights clipped nicely together. After the first few string connections, I started shrink tubing the power injection points to protect them from possibly shorting out on the permatrack. This would have been much smarter to do with all of the power injection connections. Hopefully that won't be a problem moving forward. For the most part, the install was pretty straightforward. The corners were a bit challenging. I did a better job on some than on others. If you look at them closely, they aren't pretty, but from any distance, they are just fine. The track was continuous until I needed to transition from the soffit to the small peak. 
One of the benefit of these lights is that I could just cut the wire between the lights and splice in an extension. To do this, I made my own waterproof connectors, or at least hope they will be. I squeezed some dielectric grease into a regular wire nut and used that for the connections. The connections are protected from the weather inside of the track, so I believe the grease should protect them from the elements and the connections should be quite durable. Do you have any suggestions for a better solution? Please let me know in the comments below. We continued along the last part of the roof until we got to the end. I cut the last string after the last light and used some shrink tubing to terminate the wires and the lights were all up. I mounted the controller box to the wall. It came with an internal mounting plate. I attached the power supply to the plate using some spare screws that I had that fit into the threaded holes of the power supply. I drilled a few holes in the mounting plate to make sure the screws would fit perfectly. The power supply was a bit of a tight fit in the box, so I made the power supply connections before attaching the mounting plate into the controller box. I used 14 gauge wires to connect the power supply to the controller. The controller power outputs were connected to the three wire cable to the first string of lights as well as the power injection wires. The data output from GPIO 16 was connected to the data line and I added a spare wire to GPIO 3 for my garage doors. The next step was to set up the lights in the controller by telling it the correct number of LEDs. This controller was already set up for my test system last year and had some of the lights illuminated. After a bit of trial and error adjusting the number of LEDs until they were all lit, I discovered I had 535 LEDs along my roofline. A few days after the install, we noticed there were two LEDs that didn't quite get seated properly in the track and looked a little askew. Fortunately, they were both in fairly easy to access places. I just used a pair of pliers to grab the pixel and wiggle it and pull it to get it to clip in. I am very pleased with the overall effect. I find the lights are plenty bright and are better than any other Christmas lights I have had over all the years. The install went so well. Once all the parts were ready, we were able to complete the install in just two afternoons. The install is almost invisible from the road during the day and the LEDs are bright and visible at night. I absolutely love this look. In fact, I have ordered another box of track to add lights permanently around my garage doors. I think I will also set up the Christmas tree on the front porch every year with these same style of LEDs. I wasn't originally looking for anything fancy or programmable. My original idea was just to have a setup that I didn't have to put up and take down each year. So I was surprised how much I appreciate the variety of lighting options I now have and actually use. For a cost breakdown, including shipping and tax, the lights cost about 300 Canadian. The two boxes of track, about 575 Canadian, the controller was about 50 Canadian, the controller box 75 Canadian, and the two different rolls of wire that I used were about $100. The total cost of this installation was about $1,100 Canadian. One of the benefits of these lights is the fact that they are up all year. This means that during Canada Day, I can show a red and white Canada Day style program. Uh, currently, I kind of have an idea of doing a whole bunch of red and white lights for a while and then having sort of a firework effect. So we'll have to see how that goes. And we definitely have some blue and white lights to run when the Toronto Maple Leafs are playing. If you watch this video all the way to the end, thank you. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really does help me out. Thanks so much. Cheers.